I'm Nancy Blame. I'm one of the certified orthopedic technologists at Boston Children's Hospital. And today I want to discuss taking care of the patient who is in in-bed halo traction. But basically I have two setups uh, to sit up at 90 and uh, the angled for when they're in bed. The first thing you do when you walk in the room is make sure that the line of pull to their head is relatively straight. You can do that by being at the end of the bed. And when you're at the end of the bed, you will see what you're seeing now. This patient is a little bit sideways. The line of pull should be straight down. So they should be moved slightly this way. So the line of pull is straight. Things to look at to make sure that everything is being the most amount of tension possible is that the cord should not be touching the bed here, nor should be touching any of the bars. Um, that's something that I set up every time, but if there's a change, you would just get a hold of one of the ortho techs and we would fix that for you. So when they're in bed, the basic settings, the bed is always at 30. They're not flat in the bed unless there's orders for it. Primary settings are at 30 and 90. These beds measure 30 on the side of the bed. The setups that are done so that this will run free, uh, there shouldn't be a change uh, unless they are, uh, unless you're told by the doctor. So the things to look for is that the cords are running free, they're not touching anything. These cords are for a separate setup, which is for when they're setting straight up in the air. When they're setting straight up in the air, I'm not going to set him up. You'll have to use your imagination. When you're setting, when they're setting straight up, they can set up unassisted. This way, they can still remain in traction and they can eat, they can play when they're when they're sitting up. Um, so all you do is unhook from the halo. As we've talked about before, you don't have to provide the same amount of traction as before. You just need to unhook from the halo, give some traction to help them hold their head as they're sitting up. Then once they're sitting up, you just clip straight into the clip that's on the halo. And uh, then they can sit up. They don't have to be supported with the bed, but if it's a child that needs the support, you can do it that way. If they sit up unattended, they can play, they can move around, and they can remain in traction in bed. This is the view from the side of the bed. If you're at the side of the patient, again, we're seeing the same thing that we did before, that this cord runs free, it doesn't bind in the mattress, it stays on, it's staying on the pulley, it's nice and straight, the patient's head is the way the doctor wants it. So you follow it this way, you come along here, and once you come to the back, this is the next area that you need to check for safety. What you're going to find is that this needs to hang free. It likes to catch on all of the metal in the back of the bed. The posts are turned on purpose. They take up more of the room this way, but they're turned on purpose to try to get them to clear the bed. So, And as you get more weights, it'll take more room. So you need to check that it's not setting like this so that you've lost the weight on their uh, pins in their head. So this needs to hang free. A good way to take care of the 90 degree angle cording is to, is to hook it like this. So it looks like this. And then it just stays out of the way. The parents don't get confused if they're ever helping the child. Um, and you just, when you need to use it, you just unclip them so that this can go into the halo and this can stay in the bed if they're going to sit up. So this is just a good housekeeping way to keep things clear. When you're adding weight, one of the things that you need to do is metal to metal. So you need to have this clip on metal. We don't need to take this clip and put it on cording. The problem is that we're, I'm worried that it's going to eventually wear through the cording. So it needs to be metal to metal. I have it on the small hook so that as the amount of weight gets larger, you can add all of those clips to this hook. Now you have a bag with maybe 15, 17 pounds, however, many, however much weight they have. You can pick it up and put it on here in one motion rather than having to hang each bag on this big clip. It makes it easier for you and it's safer just to have one thing. 
So then again, you hang it, you don't drop it, you let it down slowly, tell the child that the weight is coming. They're generally, they're very comfortable. It's, it's not painful every time, but it's only fair. Tell them it's coming, hang the weight, double check that it's hanging free, uh, and then you are safe. At this point, you can push the bed back against the wall. As the weight gets heavier, probably a good idea to push it away so that you can lift it safely. Generally, you have the, the weight that is on this cord gets moved over to this cord. I wanted to show this so that you could see that this one can also can hang free where it is when this on their head. The last thing to talk about is when this is when they're sitting up and there's, there's a lot of weight on this and the core, you see this when you look down that the bag is on the floor. All of the weights are on the floor. Now again, they've lost all of their pressure. So that's something you need to make sure that doesn't happen. If it does, just give me a call. I will come and fix it. Um, sometimes the cord is stretched uh, because of the weight, amount of weight. So that's the basic safety things that you need to know about in-bed halo traction.